Hello everyone, welcome back to Gloomhaven. Last time we stayed within the bounds of the city and investigated the sewers for what appeared to be some kind of poisoning, but we just found a deeper cave in the sewers, so there's more to be investigated there. But for right now we have some exclamation points, so what has been learned or gained? A steel ring is now available for purchase in the shop. When damaged by an attack, gain four shield for the attack. That's pretty sick. That's, for the most part, that's just going to be a save four damage for what is essentially almost an entire attack in most cases. That's cool to have the option of equipping. Although for right now, we need to get to level five before we can unlock a fifth slot for small items. So I don't imagine doing too much of that yet, but it's good to know about. And then Craggy over here has also leveled up to four. Rock Slide. Create three single hex obstacles in empty hexes within range four. All allies and enemies adjacent to one or more of the created obstacles suffer two damage. That seems great. Move six. The movement must be in a straight line. Craggy does also suffer for movement. This top one creates Earth Elemental and gives one XP. Kinetic Assault. Move one, attack four, or retaliate three at a range of three on self. Gives two XP for the entire turn and burn. Kinetic Assault seems really good, but really good once, which is always the problem with cards that burn. They're stronger, but they only happen the one time. Let's just see if there's anything else we want. Blunt Force, looking back, seems really strong. Attack for four, plus four attack if you burn elemental energy. But I think creating three single hex obstacles in empty hexes within range four, all allied or enemies adjacent to one or more of the created obstacles suffer two damage. It doesn't say that the hexes have to be all touching one another, so we can create three objects within range four, and that can attack up to, like probably 10 or more creatures if you do three hexes that don't touch each other that are all surrounded by foes. So I think that sounds like a pretty great card. And then we need to equip it with something. Move one adjacent single hex obstacle to an... We want to keep these create and move ones we've got this one heavy swing pushes something into an obstacle for two extra damage and that's not an attack so they don't get a chance to defend with shield so things like heavy swing clear the way rock slide are all going to become quite synergistic with each other so then it begs the question what do we get rid of I think we can get rid of Avalanche then, because I rarely play the attack on top because it's a burn. And if we're creating two single hell obstacles in single cell obstacles in empty hexes adjacent to us, why not make four on top? Oh, sorry, three heck three obstacles up to four hexes away. And because we leveled up, we of course get a perk. So we've removed four zeros and we've replaced all the negative ones that we can with plus ones. The obvious next decision would be um, take away a minus two and add two plus twos. Oh no, that's add a plus. Words today. Add a minus two and add two plus twos. Oh, words. Otherwise... I think Verdant might be quite beneficial for us. How many of our equipped cards now consume green versus use green? Neutral, creates, creates, neutral, consumes, 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 neutral, neutral, consumes, creates. There's about a 50-50 split. But to have more... I think is always going to be better. Which obviously, more of most things for us in our case is better unless it's minus cards. 
But I think some verdant will work out all right for us. All right, I don't think there's anything else to be doing right now. So we can pick another quest. I'm not going to do a city event because city events you typically do when you return to the city from elsewhere rather than just staying within the city. So we'll save that one. Frozen Hollow, find the Esther. Seek out the Esther Enchanter. Kill all enemies in all the rooms. Find the dragon. Harrow Hive is the one with the stones that we don't like. The, the walls that you have to break down. Outer Ritual Chamber. Discover what is coming. Learn the meaning of Jixera's last words. Or Ruinous Crypt. Stop the cultists. Now, this has Flame Demons, Frost Demons, and Night Demons. We need to kill Flame Demon, Frost Demon, Wind Demon, Earth Demon, Night Demon, Sun Demon. Unfortunately, it tells us that it's one of six, but it doesn't tell us which one of six, which is probably something I should have paid more attention to. But how about we take that on and try and have Mindy kill as many of these demons as possible? Now, does she want anything else in her control if we're going to be trying to kill stuff more efficiently? And probably lose into the night for this particular mission. Attack two with plush. Push. Plush. Attack two with push. Move attack two. Gain shields on attacks. Attack 4, range 5 with disarm, but burns. Move to heal self. One adjacent ally may perform attack 6. I don't know if that counts as her kill or somebody else's. But we don't have too many other standard attacks. Fearsome Blade is basically the choice. Do we still have the one that gives us plus two on our attacks? We do. The Mind's Weakness is going to be important to make all of our melee attacks too stronger. So in that case, we'll equip Fearsome Blade. Everyone else can stay as they are, and we will head out to the Ruinous Crypt. Stumbling through the woods, you are alarmed to hear the sudden sounds of a large animal rummaging through the underbush. You crouch down, gouging, gauging the grunts and growls. Through the trees, you see a large bear approaching your location. It has not noticed you yet, but imagine it will soon. Uh, the bear's done nothing wrong. We will hide from the bear. You bolt from hiding as fast as you can. Luckily, the bear was still a ways off and it gets bored with the chase before it can catch you. Still, you keep running and running and can't catch your breath. Minus one perk point. Collecting three perk points will unlock a perk. Yeah, I know that one. Your mission is clear. These elemental cultists are distorting the fabric of the world and must be stopped. With that goal in mind... You follow the writings to an ancient crypt you believe to be the cult's base of operations. Stealing yourselves for combat, you batter through the rotted door and charge into the hall of the crypt. The sight before you is both wondrous and horrifying. A group of cultists is performing ritual incantations in front of a black, gaping hole in reality. They turn toward you and snarl, unsheathing their sacrificial daggers. Behind them, an inky darkness spills from the hole and coalesces into nightmarish forms full of teeth and claws. You know you must send these terrors of the elemental plane back into the void, but you are paralyzed with fear. Oh dear, is that going to be negative effects for us in our decks? Allow none of your allies to become exhausted. Reveal a room by opening a door. Loot no gold. Loot five or more gold. Five or more is going to be far easier. Gain 13 or more XP. It will be the first to kill something. I'll take the XP because we want Mindy to try and kill as much as possible. Although that said, 
Mindy's only worrying about the elementals. So the cultists are going to be around first, I'm sure. So they might be able to do that. Kill one or more elite monsters during the scenario. Kill three or fewer monsters. Well, we're not going for three or fewer because we're going to try and get one flame demon, one frost demon, and one night demon if we can. So we'll try and take on at least one elite. Then for Brutus, he can try and open a door at some point. With four of us, there's more likelihood that one of us will go down at some point. So we'll do what we can. Right, we're having some kind of negative implied on us. All enemies, kill all enemies in the room, all mercenaries start disarmed. A disarmed character cannot perform any attack abilities. Oh boy. Okay. And we've got a small V chamber on that side. And a V chamber on this side. And we cannot currently attack. The traps are damage 4. So, I don't know if we can still shove. I'm sure Mindy can still mind control move stuff. That is just an obstacle. Alright, let's see what everyone else can do then. No attack actions. Healing, no good. We could move into the enemies and they'd take one damage, but that seems quite reckless. Attack, heal. Move stuff. Attack, next six melee attacks gain retaliate. Heavy swing, attack three, push one. I'm going to guess if we can't do the attack part, we can't do the push part either. Attack, damage people and move, jump and move more. We could just put backup ammunition up now. That doesn't seem like a bad play. Because really right now you want it to be either buffs like backup ammunition or getting a big retaliate going but we don't have any retaliates oh we do we have opposing strike next six melee attacks you would take retaliate for two so it's very strong but if we put Craghart there with the others further back on the next six melee attacks, targeting you, retaliate two. And back up ammunition for after that. Mindy, we're going to move one of these guys away from us. That's attack and push. Force one enemy within range five to perform attack two. Force one enemy within range four to perform a move one action. So we're going to do that because not only is that going to get this guy injured in the trap, but also we need to move all of these traps away to get through this door. Presumably it's going to be difficult if we have to go into this side, clear everything out from here, then traverse this whole room to do the same on the other side. That's going to be tricky. I don't know if we want to maybe open a door let them come into us, attack them here, and then go into the next side. But we will see. Move three, push two, target all adjacent enemies on bottom. Push them two. If we had ice, we could push them three. I don't know if that would let us push this guy into that trap, and this guy over into that trap or one of these traps or whether the push has to be in a straight line but if we do that we give up our ability to do parasitic influence at the same time so let's stick with what we know parasitic influence on bottom then something to do on top we probably just want to get 
Where is it? The mind's weakness going. Augment on your melee attacks. Add two to your attacks. Even if this one stands here to attack Mindy, we can then push it back one tile. So that shouldn't be a problem, even if we are going slowly. Brutus. Next six sources of damage gain shield. Move with an attack action. Attack move with jump. Move three, push one, target all adjacent enemies. So we could push this guy into a trap and push that guy further away from us. Bottom, move three, push one. And then on top. Move two, attack two. Then we can retreat after we push. Then faith. On your next four attacks targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies, add two to our attack. Pull two, a range of three. We can't pull them into the traps because that's the wrong orientation. We could become invisible. Doesn't seem super advantageous right now. We could move over and disarm one of the traps. If we were stood here, we could step over one and disarm a trap. That doesn't seem like a terrible option right now. Move three, force one adjacent enemy to perform move one with you controlling the action ending in a hex adjacent to you. Well, for that, we can force somebody else into a trap. So, can we get one thing into two traps then? We are going to move three and push one. So, if we one, two, three... and push you to there. This cell will be empty. So then Faith can move forward to and move the guy from this one to that one. So let's do that. And we want to make sure we do it after a 34. So we'll do a 20, no, we'll do, well, we have to do a 36. So that's going to be the turn. Hopefully they don't all go too fast. This guy, always attackers have disadvantage. But hopefully we can do a lot of damage with these traps. Move one, attack one, on death, attack four. Move one, attack zero, on death, attack three. Move three, attack five. That's going to be rough, but they are going a little bit later. Faith's initiative is where we want it to be. So we are moving forward to here. Skip movement. We can't push. They push X attack. Oh man, pushing is an attack action. I'm so mad. Fine. How far is this guy moving? Move three. Well, someone's going to get hit. Do I want to leave him here then? Because he's going to get hit anyway. No, because Faith is going to push this guy into that tile and then become the object of the attack. So we're going to move to here. I 
I hope Faith can move them. Alright, that's something. Now what I could also do right now is play my minor stamina potion, get this back, and then play it next turn if we step forward one and then force it into the next tile across. So give me Sinister Opportunity back. And then we skip our attack action. Craghart. We're just putting up buffs. It's a little tough burning two cards so fast. Do we want to have Earth Energy up next turn? Attack with and mobilize could be really helpful if the other guys. If we. Move that one into there, and that one to there, and then if Faith can move back, attacking both of those with um, Immobilize means they won't be able to attack us this turn, because they don't think they have ranged attacks. So I will take this early opportunity to create Earth Element, and Craghart's turn. Force this one to move to there and put our augment up. Did the augment take? It did. Good. Okay. Right. Regular turn now. Attack, move, do whatever we fancy. Faith. You're doing a Sinister Opportunity again. You're going to move this guy to there. That's going to take them from 7 to 3 HP. And that's guaranteed because they can't defend against the trap. So if we do that. And a Flanking Strike. We can do it very fast. Hit them now whilst they're next to Brutus and then move them across by standing here and pushing them to here. So that's a simple turn. That will kill this guy, hopefully. Possibly could have used the minor stamina potion to get Mindy's force movement back as well, but you live and you learn. But we also want to try and kill a Night Demon Elite with Mindy if we can. We can attack one, range two, and stun something on bottom here. But our other attacks aren't going to be able to kill the Night Demon. We might just have to settle for a scurry over and probably turn ourselves invisible with our invisibility cloak at this point. Cragheart. If we could push one of those guys into the obstacle, the obstacle would be destroyed. That would be with heavy swing. Attack three, push one. You may push the target into hexes. Containing obstacles in each case, destroy the obstacle and gain the target gains two extra damage. We would need to move one, two, three to get there to do that. We do still have Earth Element waning though. So maybe we actually want to immobilize 
this demon here. With Earthen Clod. Mindy. If you could not scurry and move next to it. If we're not next to it, it can't attack us. So if we're doing Perverse Edge on bottom... We can hostile takeover on top, attack two at a range of four. That will immobilize the one on the right. That leaves Cragheart to attack the other two guys in the center. That will immobilize them. This guy will be stunned. That guy will be immobilized. That guy will be dead. And we should get a relatively free pass on our turn. So if we're doing that on top, something to do on bottom... Do we have a heal on bottom? Move to heal one, affect all adjacent allies, attack one, affect all adjacent enemies. We could damage some enemies. Add one to all our attacks this round, so those would be attack threes. But I kind of want to keep the heaving swing. So we'll do a sentient growth. Then Craghart, unless a lot of, of course a lot of them could go faster than us, meaning we don't get opportunities to do stuff. This one is probably going to die to Faith's stuff. So then we have a chance to attack other things. Spare Dagger can attack for three at a range of three. That would hit someone from here. Attack three, push two. If we were here, I don't know if we can push that guy into this trap from there. But then we'd also be the target of any attacks, unless we went very late, perhaps. So if we did do a warning strength, we'd need to move at least one, two, three. Move four. If the movement was in a straight line, perform attack four. So we'll do that on a 42 and see how we go. Ten, ten, twenty-two. Okay, it's not going to go great. Move four, attack four. So if we can immobilize them, they won't be able to hurt us. And it's just the elite attacking for one and exploding if they die. Faith does not need to change her initiative. We are attacking this one. With disadvantage, of course, because always at disadvantage. So I think worth giving ourselves advantage to cancel it out. We still miss. That's a rough time. Right, so then we're going to step to here. Skip the rest of the movement. Force this guy to step in that trap. Mind Thief. Attack this one with Stun. Attack this one with Immobilize. Before I do that... Nope, that's Stun Powder, not the Minor Stamina Potion. Use the Minor Stamina Potion. Although, now that it's Immobilized, we might not be able to put the movement in. So we'll not do that. We also don't need to use our cape they attack for zero so they do still take an attack action 
Oh, yeah, I forgot Faith was going to get hit there as well. That's a bad time. Crankheart. We were going to attack and immobilize. But we don't have to. So we'll attack that guy for two at disadvantage. And then we get to add one target to our attack. We don't get to do the whole thing twice, unfortunately. Let's do a two attack here. And then Mindy might be able to do more with a scurry next turn. And we'll heal Mindy while we're at it. Now, Brutus. This is an attack three, push two. So now that this guy's moved, we can't push them into the trap. So we don't necessarily have to do things that way around. But we can move two in a straight line and then attack for two and then attack for three with push. I think we're going to do that. And why not double up our targets here? and attack with advantage if we're attacking multiple foes. We can't kill them this turn, so we're not going to get the on death attack 3 death rattle to us. So we'll go for the elite. And then we're going to attack the elite again because we could kill this guy and that would be bad for us. Although I don't know if they would get pushed before the death rattle goes. Curious. But we'll attack the big guy. Uh, we can push it off angles. It doesn't have to be straight. Fresh round. Faith, I would love you to go really fast and kill that guy. Now, attacking somebody that's directly next to us would induce disadvantage. However, if they are already a creature that forces us to have disadvantage, that's not going to change anything for us. So... We can attack three targets here, on top, and then on bottom. Add two to all your attacks this round, targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies. It's going to be at least you. Possibly only you. Or we could Thieves' Knack on bottom. That seems fine. Here we have Leaping Cleave. We can attack the two guys. That's on top. On bottom, we have Spare Dagger. We can attack them twice. Mindy, do you have any ranged attacks left? You do not, but... Attack two, add one to eat add one for each negative condition on the target. So that cultist leader right now is gonna take six damage if we try and attack it, which seems totally worth doing, even if it means we might not get the kill on the other guy. So if we did that on top. Move three, push two, 
target all adjacent enemies. Ah oh, man, if we did that, we could push that guy into the trap. Move three, push two, target all adjacent enemies. But then we don't have something to do. Oh, we could... We could scurry on top and then follow up with a kill. Or follow up with an extra attack. That doesn't seem terrible. And then Crackheart as ever. We can push someone into that obstacle. Probably killing them. And if we do that, if this guy death rattles, it would death rattle into him. So that seems great. That's on top. We just need a standard move on bottom. We'll do that with rumbling advance. Please let us go fast. We go fast. They're not death rattling. They are summoning living bones though, and we want to avoid that as much as possible. Move three, attack five, consume darkness, attack two more. There is darkness to be consumed, which is slightly scary. Faith does not need to change initiative. Faith is attacking you at disadvantage and both of you. Are we going to add one to the entire attack action here? Honestly, I don't think we need to. I think we'll get better use out of it later. Dead. Excellent. Okay, that makes things a lot easier. We can attack for three on bottom here then. End Scoundrel's turn. Mindy, you're up. Move to this tile. Skip movement, push you. To there. Dead. We could skip the push here. Do I want to? Yes. Right, we will move to here. Mostly to just be on the gold. Skip the rest of the movement. Attack this guy. We do it with plus two because of our enchantment augmentation. End Mind Thief's turn. We pick up the gold. Cragheart. Right, I think we're just going to attack with this. Gives us one XP. Won't attack Faith because it doesn't specify it will attack a friend. And we will move two over to here. Then Cragheart is up. Attack three with push. Shouldn't have put Brutus in the way, but hopefully this will just kill them and we won't have to worry about it. Famous last words. Right, we end Craghart's turn. They make a skeleton. But they died doing it. Right, do we have our piercing attack? We do. So trample on top. Attack three, pierce two. On bottom. Doesn't matter. So the thing we're least likely to use, balance measure. Mindy, do you have any really fast good attacks attack 2 push 3 is going to be an attack 4 but then also the pushing but we could do that fast like this 
Craghart. We could probably just take a standard attack action then. There's nothing really extra to do. Unless we can try and specifically use a skill that's going to create Earth Element for us. There's not really any good options that aren't going to injure us as well. So we'll play Dirt Tornado, Massive Boulder. We'll go late, and if this guy dies, we can move over here and chuck something into the room. Faith. On your next four attacks, targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies, add two to the attack. So we'll do this advance to move. Single out. Skeleton is going on 20. And they are moving one, attacking two for two targets, and then healing. All right, that's kind of rough. So ideally, we would kill the skeleton before anything else happens. So, fearsome blade this guy. That is a big miss. Push them to here. No, because I want the other guys to be next to them when it happens. And we can move five. So I think we're just going to stand here. We'll, we'll deal with this door first since we're closer to it. I'm just going to move away so that we aren't as prime a target. Faith can move three and attack for three. Now, they are going to heal after this attack. We could... No, we can't put the other thing up now because we've made our decision. But we will put this on for next time. End Scoundrel's turn. We get attacked twice. Thank you, Muddle. So here we're attacking with piercing. And we will move to just over by the door. And here we will take a standard attack action on top. They are dead. And we could go and bust open the door, but then all of the things on the opposite side of that wall will get a turn on this round. So I think I would rather do that next turn. Now we have a chance to long rest for people if we really want it. Brutus is the one that wants to unveil a door. So we could move and skewer to attack something a little bit further in the room. But then if we get attacked a bunch, we're then going to have problems. But I think we'll still breach the door. Craghart has retaliate and additional ammunition going. And we have rock slide. Create three single hex obstacles in empty hexes within range four. So we might be able to force something to have to kind of walk further around if we want to. So if we do that on top, we need a move on bottom. It's going to be a standard move. So we'll do clear the way and we'll go on that initiative. Mindy, attack three. Force one enemy within range five. That's going to be fine. Even if we don't get to do the frigid apparition, forcing something to attack something else might well work out for us and here we 
We could long rest to try and get our goggles back before we take a round inside. So we'll do that. And then if we really want to, we can retreat out of this space and Faith will be here to pick up. Oh, of course. I totally did not think that Brutus was going to need to be the one to do the going through the door. So now we don't have anything through the door to do. That was dumb. There is another door. So we could attack. And we still have our cloaks. So we're going to move in for two. Jeez. There's your three frost demons. A couple of living bones elites on that side. A bunch of gold and a chest, which you know I'm always about trying to get those chests. How's their initiative? 38 is bad. Skeletons attack five, targeting three, but not moving. So we're not going to be able to attack anything from here, which is fine. But what we can do is turn invisible. And now the enemies don't know that there's a path here to warrant even trying to get to us. I don't think we want to mana potion because next turn I think we're going to long rest. We'll still be in the doorway. So now Brutus. We can move in. We would be able to attack something. Oh great, they have Retaliate. Retaliate 2 and 8. Move 4, stun all adjacent enemies. They're moving 5, attacking for 3. So we'd take one attack for three if we moved in and stunned two of them. But I do wonder if maybe we just hold off. In fact, from this tile, we do have line of sight to there and there, although that's difficult to rain. So what I think we're actually going to do slightly awkwardly, is just step back here onto this gold, skip the movement, skip the attack action, pick up the gold. These guys don't have a target, so they don't move. And then Craghart is going to step to here. Then rock slide. I'm going to create an obstacle there, an obstacle there. Three single hex obstacles. Uh, honestly, I might put one here. That's difficult terrain. So if we put one there, these skeletons can't come through here. They have to cross the difficult terrain, which is going to make that much more difficult for them. So we confirm that action. Mindy, do you take damage? You do. I could have thought that through a bit more, but that's fine. We hurt the three of those, and they now have a choke point they have to move through. We end Craghart's turn. The Living Bones don't do anything because they don't have any movement. And Faith long rests. Something to get rid of. Thieves' Neck, I think, has done its job in disarming traps or being around when we might need to disarm traps. Fresh round. Right. Brutus. Mindy. Is long resting. She's still going to be there until the end of her turn, invisible meaning the other guys can't do anything. Brutus can long rest as well. Faith, who has just long rested, is probably going to want to try and get some ranged attacks in.
which we can do from this tile. Cragheart, attack three, range three, push two. But we can select two targets with that because we have backup ammunition up. But we need to short rest if we're going to do that this turn. So that means burning a random card and not getting our equipment back, although we don't have equipment to be gotten back. So I think to have as much health as we have, short resting will be fine. So we'll short rest. Heavy swing. Attack three, push something into equipment. Plus one on all of your attacks this round. I kind of really want that. So we lose Rumbling Advance, which is fine. We take one damage, which is also fine. So our best ranged attack. Crater, attack three, range three, with push two. One, two, three, that would hit those two. Or Massive Boulder, attack three, range three, all allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer one, range three. One, two, three. We can't hit anything with that. And in fact... We'd need range four to do that. So, instead, I think we're going to Earthen Clod, attack two, range five, and immobilize. We have Earth Element to burn, and if we immobilize these two... They won't be able to move at all, and the one behind them also will not be able to move. So if we do that on top, what are we doing on bottom? Probably add one to our attacks this round. Yes. Then Faith is going to step up two and stand there. That's going to be a range of one, two, three, four. Which is in range of Swift Bow. So we will open wound, swift bow. That's a move on bottom, attack on top. The other two are long resting. Move four, attack three, targeting three. Move three, attack four, create ice on an, a two patch. This is going to be fine. Faith, step up to here. Because we checked. We do have targets in sight. We don't need to pierce. I don't think we really need advantage right now. And I don't think we need a power potion. And Scoundrel's turn. Crank heart. Attack 2, range 5, and immobilize. Now, the only problem with this is if we hit this one then the other one will have a path to move through, although no, none of them will have the ability to move past this difficult terrain, because difficult terrain costs two to move into, and they only have a move of two. So we'll definitely attack the one that has a movement of three. And I think I'm just going to attack the one further back. And then... Mindy should get a better chance at killing a Frost Demon. Oh, I'm dumb. I'm so dumb. Can I rebate my plus one to my attacks, please, so that one at the back dies? I'm so dumb. All right, well, these things happen. Frost Demon Elites cannot and don't do very much. They don't even move because Mindy's still invisible, in fact. So that's just me continuing to not pay attention to the full turn. One card to get rid of. Oh, 
Honestly, I think Sweeping Blow can go. Then Mindy gets her long rest. Something to be gotten rid of. Kill one normal enemy within range four. Attack two all targets next to them. Gain one for each enemy targeted. Well, that would be an insured way to kill an ice demon. And we would kill the one behind it. And we would damage the other one. Of course, we would burn a card doing it, which is always the tricky part. But this is a card to burn, so that's not our priority right now. Fearsome Blade, you can go. Right, so Mindy is no longer invisible, meaning everything else is prepared to try and advance on our position. Harder for these guys, because they have to come through this difficult terrain. Mindy, you're up at the front. What do we want to do here? Attack to a range 4 and a mobilize would have a good chance of killing one of them. If we did that on top, what could we do on bottom? We could have the elite force the elite to attack the one with two in the center, and that would be two killed. Uh, if this one attacks this one and it dies, the retaliate won't go off. But that's fine, it still means something died. Then what are we doing with everyone else? Then becomes the question. Cragheart. We want to hit the elite more than anything else. Attack three, range three, push two. Seems good to me if we can push this guy back to there. And we'll do it on clear the way initiative. Faith. I'm really not sure. I assume these guys are going to progress a little bit closer towards us, so we could probably do Flurry of Blades as long as we do it really late in the round. And we can gain advantage and piercing against the guys with shield. So Flurry on Blades on top, something on bottom. Sinister Opportunity is fine. Make sure we're on the correct initiative. Brutus. These two are looking to die. This guy is looking to get pushed back a bit. We can move in a straight line a really long way here. Move four. If the movement was in a straight line, perform attack X, where X is the number of hexes you move this action. If we do that with our boots, we can go one, two, three, four, five, six to here. This guy is getting pushed on Craghart's turn, although we don't have to push. If they're taking three from that, that leaves them on four. If we're moving with hook and chain and attacking, we could then attack with unstoppable charge. We would take two possible retaliates, possibly only one if we get a killing blow. We're happy with the initiative. Faith's going late to attack the skeletons. They're going early. These guys are going quite early. Move five, attack three, move four, attack two. Move two, attack three, healing is fine. Mindy is up first. We are going to... Attack the one at the back. And hope to kill it. And Mindy has killed an elite monster during the scenario, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. 
Now, I was going to have this guy attack that one. But that would be a misplay. Because they both have retaliate for two. So I'm going to force the weaker guy. Confirm. To attack the stronger one. The stronger one won't die. But it will retaliate two to the weaker one. Which then will die. Even if we miss. It's like I knew. These guys are moving, which we expect. This guy is going to hit Mindy very hard. Not as hard as I'd feared. Right, we are moving. This is dashing, not jumping. Damn. So we can't go down this straight line anymore. could jump over the rock perhaps one two three four five six i don't even think we can get to there the skeletons have already moved No, because the boots aren't even jump. They're just extra range. So that's just me being daft. So as such, we will attack at three, range three with pull, just because it's a chance to attack. There's nowhere to pull them. Then we can move. I don't know if there's anywhere beneficial to move. So we'll just get a little bit more centered here for sight lines and things. Cragheart. So we're going to attack you with push. You die, the push becomes redundant. We can move forward to here. Someone has to go get that chest in an ideal world. But we're probably looking at Faith or Brutus for that. If we stand here, Faith would need to be able to move one, two, three, four, five. She can move five easily enough to get over in that direction. Attack to range three. One, two, three. We're not going to be able to get there with that. But we can get to here this turn, even if we're not going to be able to attack anything beneficially. So, Faith is focusing on going and getting that chest this turn. It's one, two, three, four tiles away. Flanking Strike does a move five. Duelist Advance does a move three. Well, we can move over and then move back. That doesn't hurt us. Craghart, you still have backup ammunition going. We have one use of that left. You see in the bottom right hand side, backup ammunition has XP, three light gray, one bright white. So there's one of those remaining on the card. Uh, massive boulder, attack three, range three, all allies and enemies adjacent to the target. So we could attack both of them and then they would both get hit. And whichever way they move in, one of them is going to stand here, probably, and one of them is going to stand behind. So we should be able to do that without too much problem. And if we're doing that on top, we need something to do on bottom. Unfortunately, moving six in a straight line, I guess we could do one, two, three, four, five, six, and get halfway across the map back towards that door. So let's do that, because we're going to need to be on the other side of the room eventually. 
And then Brutus. You probably want to move in, help with the attacking. We do have spare dagger. We do have skewer, but no air. We do have leaping cleave. One, two, three. With jump, four, five. With our boots, because the movement gives us jump, the boots gives us the extra distance. So if we do that on bottom, an attack that would hit multiple of them or just trample to attack one with piercing. And we'll do that late to try and get slightly behind them. Who hasn't had anything? Mindy. Mindy here in the doorway. You can force someone to move. We could scurry and stun one of them. We could kill one of them outright. No, because they're elite enemies, not normal enemies. There's normals, elites, and bosses, I think. Attack one, range two, stun, move three, attack three, force someone to move, move three, push targets. Pushing our targets doesn't really help us. Scurry gets us to here. And then Perverse Edge stuns one of them. If we do that... That's fine. Massive Boulder doesn't need... We have the range option for Massive Boulder. So we'll see how that goes. Move two, attack three, targeting three, heal two on self. So, Faith. I was going to say we can move and move back, didn't I? I remember saying that. We can't move back because we have to be on the chest at the end of our turn to collect it. Treasure chest found. 15 gold. So we can move to here. Don't think jumping to this tile specifically is going to give us any extra benefit. So we'll move to there. Skip this attack. Stun one of them. I don't think it's going to matter which because they're both equally as close to us. They're hitting us for three, which we can survive. Burn a card. Goodbye, Silent Scream. Brute's turn. We are jumping with boots. And let's go to here. Then attack with piercing this guy. Then Kragheart is up. And rather than hitting our own friend with massive boulder, let's just create a wall of obstacles here that will hit them both. Then we can move four. We're still going to start retreating to the other side of the room because he is a slow one. So he can be over the other side of the room waiting to breach the other side's door. 
Then over here, we want to... Oh, I was going to say we want to move and skewer. But we can skewer where we are without the need to move. That's going to be four damage with piercing. So we need to attack a second time, which we can do with Spare Dagger before thinking about moving back. Faith. We haven't used our goggles yet. So we can just short rest and start running back. Flurry of Blades. Sure. Our biggest moves are move three on top. Move five on bottom. Craghart. Simple move there. If we do it late, I don't know if we'll have a chance to heal somebody when we move, but we'll try. Mindy. This one should die. But we can attack on top with Frigid Apparition. And then move five on bottom. It's going super late. So, attack. Why not add stun? Because we use ice, whereas Brutus is using the air, which is fine. And with the pluses, we don't even have to worry about our attack action. Here, we will move over back five. Faith, we are... One, two, three, four, five gets us directly onto the rough terrain. Then three gets us out of the room. Then brute here. We have nothing left to attack. We don't have a jump to get back again. We could move six. We'd burn a card, but we would get away. So that would be two, three, four, five, six. We would get most of the way out of the room. Otherwise, we have to move two directly onto this tile, skip the attack, and then next turn, go all the way across the room. How many cards do we have at the moment? We've only burned one card, and we've done two of the three rooms that we have to beat. So apart from the moving part, I think we are going to be okay going about things the slow way. We've got plenty of cards in hand. Um, move to heal one to all adjacent allies. I don't think Mindy's going to benefit that much from just a heal one. So we'll put ourselves as close as we can to the door. Then attack two, range three, but we can't attack without an attack target, so the healing can't occur. Round ten. We are moving as fast as possible, which is a whole two. We are moving to the other side of the room on a five. Then we'll probably long rest before we get through the door. Anything we want to do on top? No. So we'll definitely long rest, so it doesn't really matter what we play as our other card. Cragheart is taking a long rest now. Mindy can take a long rest now. Faith does not need to change her initiative. We've only got zero gold so far, so we will move on to a gold pile. Skip the attack action. Then Brute is just going to move. Move X where the amount of damage you've done this turn. That is none. Craghart is long resting card to get rid of.
Honestly, I think Dirk Tornado can probably go. Mindy. I think the... Oh, no, we've... Parasitic influence is in our hand. That was what I was considering getting rid of, but that's fine. Hostile takeover, we certainly almost definitely want to play. Scurry is our best movement. Right. Perverse edge, you're out. Right. As much as I hate it, I think we need to short rest just to catch up with the group. We don't need our goggles back yet, although a long rest would get our boots back. We can move now and then long rest on the next one if we really want to. Skewer. Fine. Move four on bottom. Move two on top. All right, crack out. Are we going to bust open this door now? What I would love to do is have Faith crack open the door and make herself invisible in the doorway like we did on the previous turn or the previous door breach. Obviously, we're well past the notion now that Craggy is going to reveal a room tile by opening a door in this scenario. Not going to happen. So we would need to short rest to get a better movement card to get to this door and be invisible. So flanking strike moves us for five. Smoke bomb makes us invisible in the doorway. Craggy is going to move in for one with something and then probably rock slide create three single hex obstacles and if we're doing that on top something to do on bottom move to heal one to all adjacent allies it's going to be great mindy if we can it's going to be a chance to cremium overload or hostile takeover but we need to move a lot to get there first. So scurry for now. And we'll see if one, two, three. From there, something might be in range for a submissive affliction. Faith is opening the door. Everyone else has cards. All right. It's pretty much a flip of the previous room. There is another treasure chest. These guys are very different, though. Attack three. Target all adjacent enemies. Consume ice. Flare demons suffer one's damage. Suffers one damage. They have three shield. And this is two living bones. So we make ourselves... Invisible. They can fly, so they may well try and fly over Faith. That's going to be fun. They're going on 77, so they're going to be moved before Cragheart goes. Mindy. Move three. Two there. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Skip the attack. The elite has retaliate. So we will force the non-elite to attack the elite that has retaliate. And that kills one of them for us.
Brutus is up. Apart from trying to gain XP and gold and treasure, is there anything else that we specifically want to do? Kill the first monster we failed. Loot five gold. Kill one elite. So, apart from Faith possibly trying to go and get as much gold as possible to get her perk point, it's just a case of killing and looting now. Which seems not too bad at all. Back here, we are just moving a lot. These guys are up. They're going to fly over. No, they're not. No, they didn't have any movement, of course. Okay, then in that case, we are going to attack. Uh, Mindy wants to attack one of these guys. We did do the mind control thing. I don't know if that counts as Mindy having killed one of these for her life goal. So, if possible, we want to keep this one alive so she can do her super mega death thing on it in a minute. One, two, three, four. So, we're going to step to there. Skip the movement. Confirm a heal for our friends. Skip the attack. Ah, one, two, three, four. We're too far away for that. We're also... Oh, we're close enough to do it against that guy. So we'll put one there to hurt that. And two here to funnel them along. They take two damage because it's not an attack roll. Fresh turn. Mindy. Kill one normal enemy within range four. That's the most important thing. So we need to be within range four of that guy. Move four. Stun one adjacent enemy. One, two, three, four. Stun them, kill them. Excellent. Get some XP. So they get killed. They still have two health left. But they'll be stunned. So they won't be attacking us. Uh, faith. How much moving and attacking can you do over here? Three on top. Move three, force someone to move. I'll take the move three and the swift bow attack just because we're going to get double damage with that this turn. Cragheart, do you have an, a way to easily help kill the elite one? Move one adjacent single hex obstacle to an empty hex within range. Four. Attack two, target all enemies adjacent. So that is an attack roll. If we can push somebody, we can push them into an obstacle. Do we have the one that lets us move? Move five, jump, destroy all obstacles along the way. So that's one, two, three, four. Then we can push you into this rock. Attack three, push one. You may push target into a hex containing obstacles. Then Brutus at the back. We might as well move in as fast as we can and attack with stuff that's going to grant us extra XP as we go. End selection. They're going super fast and that upsets me. Move four, attack two at a range of four, put burn on. No, infuse fire element, of course. Um, 
continue. Faith, I would like you to go on 26, please. Ahead of Cragheart, uh, Brutus. Oh, they're not... They're not trying to attack Faith and they're not trying to move because they don't see a path through her. The other guy... Misses. Mind Thief. Alright, so we're going to move to here. We're not going to be able to stun the elite, but that's fine. Confirm movement. Skip the rest of the movement. Stun them. Get one XP. Kill this guy. We take some retaliate, that's fine. These guys can't hurt us. Right, Faith, we are moving into here. Skip the ability. Now you can, you can go there. We might be having an easier chance of killing you from there. And here we are attacking. This also means they're not stood together, so I think we're doing extra damage because they're not next to one another. And why not attack with advantage just so we don't accidentally miss? We don't need the piercing. 19 damage. That's a new record for me, I think. I'm going to jump to here. Attack this guy with advantage. And Brute's turn. Craghart, you've got the interesting one. So we need to move five to here. For a moment, I had totally forgotten about the existence of that chest. Skip the last of our movement. Then attack this guy. Confirm target. Push them into that rock. They take two damage and die. Why not heal ourselves with a potion? End turn. Right, Craghart needs to move three to get that chest. Um, we are going to put warding strength on and move. Faith is going to... Are we going to have... We don't have a loot card. So with how many turns we have left, we are going to need to stand on Four more piles of gold. Unless we can get the skeleton to stand on a pile of gold before we kill it. Which I don't think we can. So, if we lose a card this turn, that's down to four card, uh, down to three cards. If we lose a card the next turn, that's down to one card. And even if we get to play another turn, there's no circumstance here where we can play enough cards to loot four piles of gold. So Craghart's just going to try and make sure he gets that chest. So that's a move three that we need. All adjacent allies suffer one damage. Move four. We'll do that because we get some XP for doing it. Anyone else able to get some extra XP? We can play Parasitic Influence and Hostile Takeover. Hostile Takeover will mean we don't take any damage this turn because they won't attack us. Move four on bottom and that'll be fine on top. Skeleton does not phase me. 
We're going to force this guy to be our friend. That gives us 2 XP. And we're going to skip this attack, but put the, the augmentation on. That gives us an extra XP. Do we want to bring back a card that we can play next time that will give us XP? Well, we still have to rest, so that's bad on my part. Living Bones passes. We are going to put this up. And skip this attack action. Cragheart is going to... Skip that ability, move to there. Skip the rest of the movement, skip the ability... Get one XP, skip this attack, and Craghart's turn, they get the chest. 15 gold, same as the other side. Scoundrel is just long resting, because we can't ever get all of the extra gold across the room. And now, last chance to play any extra cards for any extra XP. Mindy can loot two on bottom. And over here, just long rest, you earned it. So Mindy is going to loot everything in range. We skip that attack. No bother at all. We use warding strength specifically because we're trying to get extra XP by using it, but they only attacked us once. But we can use Unstoppable Charge for a rare treat. Now, if there was a room I missed, I'll be really mad. And we can move on to a pile of gold. It's still worth gold to us. And with the end of that orbit. Yes. With the cultists and their minions dead, it seems the Dark Rift is now dormant. It's no less disconcerting, however. You toss a rock at it, and the rock disappears into nothingness. You must admit that you wonder whether you could enter the rift yourself, and whether you would survive the trip to wherever the rock ended up. Alternatively, finding some way to close the rift is probably the more prudent decision. There's an Aesther enchanter in Gloomhaven who may know more about this interplanar stuff. She's been known to ask for impossible favors before she helps anyone, though. Okay. So, Scoundrel set a new damage record, given that we hit for like 19 at the end there. I never really looked into these stats. Scoundrel used 9 items. Cragheart healed for 12. Lots of interesting stuff there. We get a new perk point for our Hunter, kill one more elite monsters during the scenario. Everybody else failed theirs. I'm hoping to see Mindy's life goal bar go up a bit, because I think she killed each different type of elemental drake or whatever they were called here. So I'm hoping for that. Quest complete. 8 XP each. Plane of Elemental Power. Uh, did we not get any? 
Oh no, we got to three of six. So, remind me later, that was a frost and a fire, wasn't it? So I think we've done frost, fire, and night. Or flame, frost, night. Or was that a flame demon or sun demon? Who knows? Not me. Brutus is on 10 of 15 scenarios. Faith, we still need to go find more in the dagger forest. And Craggy did not earn any perk points there. So, these two scenarios appear to be linked scenarios. That's why we're not currently at the city. Yeah, everything else is locked now. So we can either go back to the city or we can go to the plane of elemental power, I believe. So that's a decision for us to make next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.